I shall ensure a continuance of those favours which it will ever be my study to deserve. If I should ever be called upon to act professionally, I'm happy to think that there will be no difficulty in finding plenty of people whose loss will be a distinct gain to society at large. <laughs> Chief Justice, 
usual, I think. A Lord Chamberlain? Very blue done.
night and day for three weeks in the belief that your guardian was beheaded. Now I find that you're about to be married to him this afternoon. Alas, yes. But you do not love him. Alas, no. No, body pie, drat. <laughs> Why do you not refuse him? What good would that do? He's my guardian, and he wouldn't let me marry you. But I would wait until you were of age. You forget that in Japan, girls do not arrive at years of discretion until they are 50. True. From 17 to 49 are considered to be years of uh, <laughs> indiscretion. Besides, a wandering minstrel who plays a wind instrument outside tea houses is hardly a fitting husband for the ward of the Lord High Executioner. But, <coughs> Shall I tell her? Yes. She will not betray me. What if it should prove that, after all, I am no musician? There. I was certain of it. Directly I had you sing. <laughs> what if it should prove that I am no other than the son of His Majesty the Mikado? The son of the Mikado? But why is your highness disguised? What has your highness done? And will your highness promise never to do it again? Some years ago, I had the misfortune to captivate Katisha, an elderly lady in my father's court. She misconstrued my customary affability into expressions of affection and claimed me in marriage under my father's law. My father, the Lucius Junius Brutus of his race, ordered me to marry her within a week or perish ignominiously on the scaffold. That night, I fled his court and assuming the disguise of a second trombone, I joined the band in which you found me, and I had the happiness of seeing you. If you please, I think your highness had better not come too near. The laws against flirting are excessively severe. But, uh, we're quite alone, and uh, nobody can see us. Still, that don't make it right. To flirt is capital. Oh, it is capital. And we must obey the law. Oh, just take the law. I wish it would, but it won't. If it wasn't for the law, how happy we should be. Oh, happy indeed. Oh, if it wasn't for the law, we should now be sitting side by side. Like that. Instead of being obliged to sit half a mile off. Like that. Oh, we should be gazing into each other's eyes. Like that. Breathing sighs of unutterable love. Oh! <laughs> like that? With our arms around each other's waists. Like that. If it wasn't for the law. Oh, if it wasn't for the law. As it is, of course. We couldn't do anything so kind. Not for worlds. Being engaged to Coco, you know. Being engaged to Coco. <laughs>
live. It hardly seems worthwhile. Oh, massively! Oh, massive! Now then, what is it? Can't you see I'm still in a crisis? You have interrupted an apostrophe, sir. No, no. I am the bearer of a letter from His Majesty, the Mikado. A letter from the Mikado? What in the world can he have to say to me? Uh, take a seat. I am 
so proud. My pretty my
don't see in them, of course. <laughs> but they'll be there all the same. Oh, do you think Yum Yum would really be distracted at my death? I'm convinced of it. Bless you. She's the most tender-hearted little creature alive. I should be sorry to cause her pain. Perhaps, after all, if I were to withdraw from Japan and travel in Europe for a couple of years, I might contrive to forget her. Oh, I don't think you could forget Yum Yum so easily. And after all, what is more miserable than a love-blighted life? True. Life without Yum Yum. Why? It seems absurd. And yet there are a good many people in the world who have to endure it. Poor devils, yes. You're quite right not to be of their number. I won't be of their number. No more fellow. I'll tell you how I'll manage it. Let me marry Yum Yum tomorrow, and in a month, you can behead me. No, I draw the line at Yum Yum. Oh, very well then. If you can draw the line, so can I. Stop, no, wait, be reasonable. How can I consent to you marrying Yum Yum if I'm going to marry her myself? My good friend. She'll be a widow in a month. You can marry her then. I quite see that, but my position during the next month would be most unpleasant. Most unpleasant. Not half so unpleasant as my position at the uh, end of it. <laughs> oh. Very well, then. I agree. Oh. After all, <laughs> It's only putting off my wedding for a month, <laughs> but you won't prejudice her against me, will you? You see, I educated her to be my wife. <laughs> She's been taught to regard me as a wise and good man. <laughs> and now, uh, I shouldn't like her views on that point disturbed. Ah, uh, trust me, she shall never learn the truth from me. <laughs>
As in a month gone to die, if Coco tells us true, twa empty compliment you cry long life to Nanky Poo. But as one month you have to live as fellow citizen, this toast with three times three will give long life.
and rejoices in her loveliness. I am a child of nature and take after me mother. <laughs> at this sort of thing. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> 
Yes, how time flies when one is thoroughly enjoying oneself. That's the way to look at it. Don't let me down, Hearty. There's a silver lining to every cloud. Certainly. Let's be perfectly happy. By all means, <laughs> let's thoroughly enjoy ourselves. <laughs> Like to retire 
It must pain you to see us so affectionate together. No, I must learn to bear it. Now, oblige me by allowing her head to rest on your shoulder. Like that. Like that. I'm much obliged to you. Now, Of a wedding. You can come to mine. It's awfully kind of you, but that's impossible. 
Why so? Today I die. What do you mean? I can't live without Yum Yum. This afternoon I perform a happy dispatch. No, no, pardon me. I can't allow that. Why not? <laughs>
the belly it sharper when anyone catches his doom's extremely hard. Is made to dwell in a dungeon cell on a spot that's always barred, and there he plays extravagant matches in fitless finger stalls on a cloth on true with a twist and a cure, an elliptical billiard balls. Well, 
an unqualified apology. I wish to associate myself with that expression of regret. We really have the least notion of regret. Of course. How could you tell? Come, come, my good fellow, don't distress yourself. If a man of exalted rank chooses to disguise himself as a uh, second trombone, he must take the consequences. It really distresses me to see you take on so. And no doubt, he thoroughly deserved all he got. Oh, we are infinitely obliged to your majesty. Much obliged, your majesty. Very much obliged to your majesty. Obliged? Not a bit. Don't mention it. How could you tell? No, of course, we couldn't tell who the gentleman really was. It wasn't written on his forehead, you know. It might have been written on his pocket handkerchief. But Japanese don't use pocket handkerchiefs. <laughs> <laughs> I am be. 
for your love. But I will not live without it. <laughs> <laughs> Darling! You! Whose hands to reek with the blood of my betrothed, dare to utter words of passion to the woman you have so found in Rome! And oh, Lord! Accept <laughs> my love, or I perish on the spot! Ah! so well as I, that no one ever yet died of a broken heart. You know not what you say. Listen. <laughs> Yes. 
you are. And you won't hate me if I'm just a teeny, weeny, wee bit bloodthirsty, will you? Hey, did you? <laughs> Catch a <your> shot. <laughs> Not beauty, even in bloodthirstiness? My idea! Is as good. 
Lord is dead. Practically, he is dead. And if he is dead, why not say so? I see. <laughs> Nothing could possibly be more Satisfactory! For he's wrong and married your girl. Your man will be very good, or you'll be very happy with you, and that is enough. And you're no expression of On this subject, I tell you, you're enough. Your notions are very, and not worth a penny. The word of your guidance is wrong. You're a very good bargain at me. On this subject, I tell you, you're enough.